Verse 15, to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Well, here's the next truth I see in the story. Write this down. God believes in me so much that he gives me talents with which to serve him. Now, just so there's no confusion, when Jesus uses the word talent, he's, he's referring to a unit of money back in his time. We're using the word talent to refer to our gifts and our abilities, our literal talents. It just so happens that in English, the words are the same, which isn't a bad thing, because it helps us to get the point. A talent of money in the story is a symbol of the gifts and talents that God has given us. And we're to use them. Now, at first glance, we read this, this verse here, and what do you want to ask God? Don't you want to say, hey, you're not being fair here, God. You, you gave one guy five talents, you gave one guy two, you gave one guy one. What gives? But the story is not about fairness. The story is, is about how life is, how life works. The varying amounts of talents are not a symbol of our worth. Do you think the one with five talents is more important than the one with two in God's eyes? Nope. They all have equal worth. They're just a picture, the different amounts of talents, of, of, of the different talents we all have and the different opportunities we're given to use them. And those just aren't the same for any two people. What you need to know about a talent is that a talent is a phenomenal amount of money. One talent in Bible times was easily worth several years worth of wages. How many of you would like to receive one talent from God right now? Like five years worth of wages. The one who had the one talent was given more money by his master than he possibly knew what to do with. He was, in, he was given this incredible abundance. So if you compare yourself to the guy with the one talent, you should not be saying to God, Hey, why'd you rip me off? What you should, should you be saying to God? Wow, God, show me what to do with this abundance that you've given me. Or a better question would be to ask, God, what are these talents that you've given me to use to, to grow your kingdom? There's two things we can do to find out the talents we have. Write these down. The first is you can look in the mirror. If you want to know how you're talented, look in the mirror. And by that we mean uh, do some sort of self-assessment of your talents. There are dozens of tools today. How many of you in the military have had to do like a half dozen different self-assessments? Yeah? Myers-Briggs, you know, you can do an Enneagram, that's the fad these days. Strengths Finders is a good one. Do you, but do you know that Strengths Mind, Strength Finders got bought out? I went to the website the other day to check it out. Do you know what they call Strengths Finders now? Clifton Strengths. <laughs> That is so funny. If you're watching from home, my last name is, is Clifton. Uh, but please don't come up to me after church and say, oh, Pastor Clifton, give me some strength. Or don't come up and go, what are my strengths? I, no, no. Clifton strengths, you've got to be kidding. Why? I don't even understand that. In a couple weeks, we're going to look at a, an, another tool. We've talked about it before. Some of you have heard about it. We're going to talk about... Uh, Taking a shape inventory, knowing your shape. How many of you, raise your hand if you've heard of that before. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool for learning how God has shaped you, literally, to serve him. And by the time we're done with that teaching, each one of you who wants to will know what his or her shape is. It's a wonderful tool. So, look in the, look in the mirror. That's a way to know how what your talents are, but a second thing is this, a second way to discover them is just look out the window, write that down. Look out the window. And by that we mean just look out there at all the needs that you see and roll up your sleeves and get down to work. The point is you don't need a self-assessment tool to discover what your talents are. You just look out the window and get down to work, do something, you'll learn something about yourself that way. The Christian writer Frederick Buchner, Buchner said this, the place God calls you to is the place where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest need. That's beautiful. There are times where we can, just, we can do too much introspection, you know, and sometimes it's important to serve not only where you're gifted, but serve where you're needed. 
a few years back when uh, Superstorm Sandy went up uh, Long Island Sound and, and devastated the coast there, our church was one, one of many that over a period of several months dispatched teams of volunteers to go and help the people whose, uh, whose houses and lives were in ruins because of that storm. Now, one of my Clifton strengths is not home repair, and some of you are starting to discover that uh, more and more. I'm not like Ryan Lott. I don't know if Ryan's watching from home, but Ryan in his sleep can build these giant spacious decks with gold-plated inlaid fire pits that when they stand back, it looks like the portico to the Kennedy Center. Do you know what I mean? And uh, if, if the zombie apocalypse ever happens, you want to be on Team Ryan. You don't want to be on Team Bear, I'm telling you. But, even though I can, I can scarcely, you know, tell a hammer apart from a wrench, I can take down a water-ruined wall of sheetrock. And so I went down with our team for uh, a couple of the times where they did that. So, serve where you're gifted, look in the mirror. Serve where you're needed, look out the window. God believes in us so much that he gives us an abundance of talents and gifts to serve him with. 